there folks, welcome you all to yet another vlog of mine. It has only been yet a few weeks since the last one. People were on a bit of a roll, I think you'll find. <laughs> Flaggins up to you all. It is, in fact, Flaggins up Saturday, and there was actually uh, there was only one sort of major thing sort of happened this week that I was aware of, which was the Dragon's Dogma gameplay reveal. And I was like, mm, is there going to be enough news this week to actually bother with a uh, a vlog like this? And in fact, there was. I was sort of scrolling through the IGN app like I do before these things, and there was loads of little articles just popping up all over the place so we have got quite a few things to talk about as it happens people and i will as always people put the time codes below I, I eventually get to it i don't normally i don't always get to do it if you're watching this live well not live but but when we put it premiere uh, it sort of streams live and you can't have the timestamps. but after that when you're watching it after the premiere then the timestamps. I put them in and you, you'll be able to sort of jump to the bit that's of interest to you people. So you'd have to listen to me bleat on if you don't really want to. Uh, so we have got quite a few things to talk about. Channel-wise, uh, we'll have some news on the old channel, people. I've, I've been enjoying doing these. We're still in podcast mode, just in case the dog next door kicks off. <laughs> So we're still having the mic close to me. In fact, to be fair, I'm actually quite enjoying having the mic close to me. But I really, uh, for those of you who watched it last week, uh, the vlog last week, I explained what I do to make this microphone get to my mouth this close in this particular room uh, because it's easy when I'm doing the gameplay because it's sort of to the side, the laptop and everything's kind of that way. And this just re this reaches me nice when I'm sitting over there to do it. It's only... It's only yard people it's a yard but it just doesn't quite reach my mouth up here when i'm doing these so i have to bring something else down to attach it to and then i'm able to reach up here so it'd be nice to find something a bit more e well a bit easier to be able to do it either to drag this down from upstairs and then put this on it and so on and so forth it's just a bit of a faff that it takes me five minutes but still whenever i whenever i set myself up to do something i try and make it so that it's easy to do people so we can just get to it and not have to have a, a whole load of fuss around it and it means that if i do have an inkling to do something i just do it instead of thinking oh that's going to be a right faff to get around to so so yeah really enjoying these and uh, i will continue to do these over the christmas period uh, I've, I've got a few weeks left of work i am lucky enough people to work in education and well, for an educational institution, uh, a college. And for that matter, I then get all of the Christmas break effectively. So we get a full two weeks off at Christmas, which is fantastic. So I'm hoping to get a whole bunch of gaming done and a whole bunch of chilling done and all sorts of good stuff, people. I've got my son, Aaron Brew, is coming down to visit me, not this week coming, but the following week for four days i think so that's brilliant i don't normally see him that close to christmas he's up in edinburgh i'm down in blackpool a uh, so I, we normally see each other sort of novemberish but because of all the train strikes and stuff we had to delay it multiple times him coming down but he managed to squeeze it in just before the christmas kick well just before his christmas parties and everything kick off so he's coming down not next week not this week coming but the following week and we'll get four days together i haven't decided whether we're going to record anything yet because i'll talk about that just in a sec because i haven't been recording for the channel anyway because of my hand people which we've still got the uh this this um this is just uh compression banding um which is supposed to help with uh swelling effectively on joints and such like so it's not that i've still got cuts or stitches or anything i haven't all of that's now healing up and everything um i can have now to there this is for anyone that doesn't know what i'm on about I, this is the accident that i had uh, on my hand and we're still getting there so the reason i'm not been doing let's plays is because uh, i've not been gaming that much because of my hand however uh, i have managed to get a bit of recording done people and it's not on what you would have wanted me to do <laughs> weirdly enough i ended up with and i can't remember when i bought it it might even have been last black friday not even this black friday but i bought a digital version of arcania and Arcania was the very first game that I posted up from a, just a PS4 share many, many years ago when it came out on the PS4 as a, as a remaster. And I just had this, I just, it was it's still to this day one of my most popular videos. And yet I saw it on the store for like three or four pound. It was so cheap. And I thought, well, I'll just grab it digitally. I've got it on disc, but I like, I like just grabbing the digital version. So I don't have to faff around with the discs if I see them cheap enough many, many moons later. And it's been niggling at me because when the PS5 came out, I played it from the disc again, just to see how it played on the PS5. And it was beautiful people. It was the most beautiful 60 FPS. And I recorded about eight parts. This is about two years ago. 
when the PS5, well, nearly three years ago when the PS5 first came out. And I did it with a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Tried a whole bunch of games out of Let's Plays that I didn't quite finish. And I just had this itch to get back to it. So I, I when it came to for, when it came to recording something now after my accident, I thought I'm going to, I played a bit of, uh, what did I do? I finished something off. Oh yeah, finished off Jedi Survivor, which I told you about in another vlog. I, and then I still wasn't really up to recording for the channel. Then I started playing some Alan Wake. Then I jumped to Resident Evil 4, which I'm still on with off camera. But I had this itch to do some recording for you guys. I really didn't want to get into anything too brain heavy. And I thought, I just had this itch still in the back of my brain going, I really want to get back to that Arcania playthrough. So that's what I've done. And I off camera, I haven't posted any up yet because my brain was telling me to record all of it before you start posting it up. <laughs> Which sounds a bit silly, but I don't. I didn't want to get back into it and then let you down by not finishing it. And I have recorded a lot of episodes i think i've recorded 11 episodes we had we had eight parts and i've just finished part 19 yeah so i've I've recorded 11 parts all of which are over an hour or well most of them are an hour ish and some of them are about an hour 20 a couple of them i think so we've done a uh, yeah about 11 and a half 11 and three quarter hours something like that of arcania and it's it's picked up exactly because i still had the save from where i did it two and a half three years ago so it's picked up the playlist will if you want to watch it from the beginning the playlist will start from number one and i've picked it up at part nine so yeah i mean it was quite smooth actually and it's quite an easy game to get back into and i've thoroughly enjoyed playing it again so anyway there you go you've got some rpg goodness coming your way people on a game that a lot of you have probably not even played and probably haven't even looked at and you may fall in love with it like i did the clumsy gem as i call it i just something's always taken me back to that game on many platforms and it plays gorgeously. The only one of the only annoyances on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 is that it, the cutscenes don't work in the game. <laughs> so you don't get any of the cutscenes. I think you get the I think you get the opening scene, but every cutscene after that just doesn't work for some reason. It's not just the PS5. It didn't didn't work on the PS4 either. But it doesn't it doesn't take anything away from it. And they, they weren't up to much anyway. They were just little story pieces. It's fine. And you get the gist of it as you're going through anyway. So there you go. So you've got a, I will maybe I mean I, I I said to myself I wasn't going to post any up until I'd finished it. But now that I've got eleven episodes done on top of the eight that were already there, so I'm about to record part twenty the next time out. Uh, I think I'm I'm pretty confident we're going to see it through to the end. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I must be well over two thirds of the way through it now. So yeah, thoroughly enjoying it as well. So I might well, I haven't even rendered them together yet. I've just literally got the recordings through OBS and uh, I haven't put the schmeltings of beginning as ends and on all that sort of good stuff that I do uh, before I post them up. I, I, so I've got that to do. I might twiddle with a bit of that tonight, just getting some of them rendered. So I may th start throwing them up as of this week coming. If not, then I'll certainly try and throw them up over the this coming Christmas period. But you'll be getting some Let's Play very, very soon, people. It is there and it's already 11 hours recorded. How good is that? Right, shall we, people? Shall we? I don't think there's anything else to talk about channel-wise. Uh, that's it, really. I, I, I'm feeling back to doing some recording. I wanted something easy going, and that's why I went for Arcania. And we'll take it from there, people. We'll see how we get on. Um, it has been... All right, to be fair, doing it. Um, I've not been particularly uncomfortable now. I'm, I'm able to grip enough now um it does get like i'm still not able to straighten the these fingers so there's a if you spend too much time like this it's kind of not helping <laughs> getting it straight that way but I, st I need to get both both of both bits working that way and that way so six and a half a dozen i'm looking at like therapy but it does get very i had to take a break sometimes and just start doing some exercises to get it all sort of loosened up again but we are getting there people we're getting there right should we talk about some news flagons up to you all once again you know i'd share it people have a good thirsty work this people i haven't even decided what's going to be in the thumbnail yet people um i think most like well the thing is i put dragon's dogma on it last week but we're talking about dragon's dogma again this week dragon's dogma 2 that is people uh, we do have i'm going to kick off however with the news that is probably the biggest news in gaming over the last i'm going to put my glasses on because all of these things are on the uh, the articles people uh, the biggest thing that's probably come into the news of gaming over the, the last number of weeks, actually, but the the date finally of 
popped up this week for the new trailer for Grand Theft Auto 6 is finally upon us, people. Uh, no release date or anything like that yet. However, uh, the Grand Theft Auto 6 first trailer is on this coming Tuesday the 5th at 2 p.m., GMT, well, is it GMT? Yeah, it's GMT now, or winter time, whatever winter time is. <laughs> I think we've only got GMT and BSD here. Uh, so, yeah, two, in the UK, 2 p.m. in the UK, uh, GMT. So, I think uh, in America, it'll be a number of hours back the way I think they are, aren't they? Eight hours behind or whatever it is. So, yeah. Um, so, that's a weird... Uh, well, actually, thinking about it, I was going to say it's a weird time now, since as Americans will all be in the morning. However... Uh, it's most likely because it's a British studio, isn't it? So they're doing it for... One for the Brits people. <laughs> it's not often we get that, is it? It's always always done around American and uh, Americans and uh, Japanese and, and those sort of worlds, I suppose. So very nice, yep. So for those people... I mean, I've, I've spoken about Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption on this channel many times, people. And uh, I always say that I got into Red Dead Redemption 1... I mean, I just loved it. Saw it all the way through to the end, story campaign-wise. Did a lot of the open world stuff. Uh, absolutely loved that game. And I just, I loved the opener of Red Dead Redemption 2. Just couldn't get into it after that. I found it too slow going. Found it too massive. Just didn't find it particularly interesting. Um, and I don't, I don't do any of the online stuff. I'm just talking about playing it single player. So, and then you've got uh, Grand Theft Auto. Now, the only Grand Theft Auto that I spent any major amount of time with was probably Vice City, and it was only because it had all of that sort of 80s vibe to it. And that was many years later taken over, and I talked about this in the last vlog as well, I think, uh, taken over by Sleeping Dogs. And Sleeping Dogs is by far my favourite game of that kind of ilk. Absolutely adore it. And that had many little... It wasn't set in the 80s, but it had lots of little sort of 80s radio channels and all that sort of stuff in it. So it kind of gave me the same vibe when I was cruising around on a speedboat listening to the 80s channel and all that sort of stuff. So sort of Vice City was the only sort of t real time I spent with the GTA game. And it wasn't anything heavy. I just sort of, and it was only <laughs> driving around listening to all the 80s channels and stuff. I, and just loved the vibe of it. I never ever started it and finished it. I just kind of started it, played it for a while, and then that was it. So they've not ever been a big thing for me, GTA. And I can understand why people are into them. I totally get why it's massive. Uh, my son's really looking forward to the sort of online stuff coming back. And him and his mates played a lot of the online stuff over the pandemic, I think, for GTA 5. So, I mean, absolutely. I understand. I totally understand why it is such a massive deal. Uh, but it's just not my bag, baby. Not really. I mean, I'd hoped that Red Dead Redemption 2 was going to be my bag because I loved Red Dead Redemption, played that beginning to end. But they just didn't get the same feels for me in that second game. Loved the opener, though. Fantastic opener. But it just wound... It was almost a little bit like Resi sort of wound me up at the beginning because he was walking so slowly. Like, you could only walk or sprint. It was like, oh, my God. It was like Red Dead Redemption 2 was just trying to smell itself so much that you... <laughs> He said, "Wow, we're so pretty. We don't want you running too quickly around these areas. We want you to walk nice and slow and take a good, a good meander up the streets of towns and stuff." It just wound me up, and it just didn't hook me in for whatever reason. Sometimes you can never put your your, your finger on it. Really, I mean, it, it could have been that I just wasn't in the vibe for it. People, sometimes you just need to be in the right zone for a game, don't you? I mean, it's it could have been that simple. But I have tried it a few times, and I just couldn't get just couldn't get the into the zone for it. So. Anyway, it was a good idea putting the microphone back up like this because the dog's off, people. He's off again. He must have been having a snooze when I started. So there you are. If you're well into to Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto 6, first ever trailer and reveal, people, is coming on Tuesday. I'm assuming that is a... It's not Game Awards or anything because that's later. So it's, they're doing their own thing. So just look to the rock star. <laughs> I nearly said steady, but that's Batman. Rock star a youtube channel i suppose would be the best place to look if not ign and all those sort of people will be showing it off without any shadow of a doubt a uh, moving swiftly on uh dragon's dogma 2 had its big showcase and ga gameplay reveal uh this week and it is uh, well and a release date people it is coming out on the uh, dragon's dogma 2 22nd of march this coming year people spring is starting to look very nice indeed because uh, i can't remember off the top of my head what they are but there's quite a few games popping their heads up in february and march i think now so i'm quite excited about spring and it's been this way for uh, quite a few years now little people that the, the, the games that want to kind of make an impact 
don't want to take on the big guns tend to just sort of throw themselves in at the spring window because all of the big guns want to kind of get there before the holiday season starts. And so I've, I found this, but Dead Space was the same. Pretty sure Dead Space was a February releases. Certainly for one, I'm pretty sure, well, definitely two was. I feel like one was as well, but two was definitely a Feb release. And I'm sure three was as well. So they were spring, well, end of winter spring releases. Um, so I think it's a, it's a very, very nice little slot to put yourself into if you want to make a big impact and not have to take on some of the big guns. Although, go and watch a big guns drop itself in there now. I mean, I've, I've, now that I'm saying all of this, I feel like maybe Final Fantasy 7 2 has sort of dropped itself in there somewhere. So, <laughs> that is kind of a big gun, I guess. A The trailer itself, I, I was going to watch it again before I did this vlog, but I thought, let's just see how much I remember off the top of my head. And then, once I've kind of sprattled around with that, well, I've got the article from IGN, which kind of goes over a few things. Now, I I think the biggest takeaway I've got from this is that it's... I felt like I was watching just Dragon's Dogma, but it just looked a lot prettier. And I'm not. that's not a bad thing, but I'm just cu curious as to whether or not there's enough new in it to make it a new experience and not just... I don't want exactly the same experience as Dragon's Dogma. It was a... It, it's got a very good cult following, Dragon's Dogma, but it was by no means a perfect game, and it was by no means uh, the best RPG I've ever played. So I'm really hoping that they have found some way to make it... I mean, if you remember, Dragon's Dogma had to get a, a few good add-ons as well before it actually felt like there was a good bit of meat and bones in there as well, because one of the gripes about it was that there wasn't much in it um, when it first came out. Uh, so I'm just kind of hoping that they've kind of really filled the meat and bones out of Dragon's Dogma 2 from the beginning and from the off, so there's loads to explore. A little thing that's concerning me slightly is that they've said that it's exactly the same world <laughs> and uh, areas, I think, which also makes me feel like, well, do I really... I mean, I'd be very surprised if we're running the same paths in the same towns, but it's basically an alternate world of the same place. Or an alternate reality of the same place, I should say. So I'm hoping that there's enough difference to make it interesting because the last thing I want to be doing is playing the whole bloody same areas again because that's just not interesting at all. So there's a there's some question marks I've got in my head at the moment about how different is this game going to be because it looked just like Dragon's Dogma but very, very pretty. They're telling us it's the same world but just an alternate version of it. So the landscapes and stuff, I assume, are going to be the same. So it's basically what's in those landscapes, hopefully, that are different. Uh, different people, different, you know, stories, all that sort of stuff. What was very cool was that, I mean, the battles and stuff looked like they'd been enhanced a lot. I mean, there was a battle with a massive, like one of the things out of the old God of Wars, massive thing that you, you jump onto and you start fighting it or you're climbing it. Uh, and you were jumping on it from cliff tops, and there were, there were, you were flying on a, like a bird was flying you onto it and all this sort of stuff, which was really cool. I think they were jumping off onto the birds and jumping back on again. So there was some really, really cool stuff going on. The battles, the, the action looked really, really good. I mean, it looked, all to all intents and purposes, it looks exactly the same as the first one did with its battles. It just looks far more, um, I don't know, far, just a bit, a lot more to it. So that you've got more freedom again. Uh, but you're still jumping on and climbing and smashing things and there's weak points on the enemy you've got to hit and all that sort of good stuff. There was also, uh, they showed a section where you go and meet the elves and it was like that the elves have their own area in the game, their own sort of world, if you like. Well, not world, but place where they live. And I, I want to say settlement, but I think it's bigger than that. Uh, but, but they were speaking in Elvish. And you could only understand what they were saying if you had a pawn, like a sidekick, that could understand what elvish was and if they didn't then i think you had to go and find someone to translate for you with all that sort of stuff so it's quite cool like that and all the, the sort of elvish words were coming up at the bottom of the screen which i thought was really really cool so I, I i love that sort of stuff i mean that's going into the sort of lord of the rings sort of depth of lore isn't it it's like <laughs> writing your own languages for games and stuff is superb i'd be curious to know if they've actually borrowed the language from lord of the rings or whether they created their own their own elvish language it'd be interesting to find out what they did there so whether or not there's other uh, sort of groups like that, like dwarves and, I don't know, taller people and all that sort of stuff. 
<laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll have to find out. But they certainly only pushed the elves at that point. But that's another interesting addition to it, if you like. Although I'm wondering, if, I'm, I'm trying to remember now if there were, if you could be an elvish character in the game. I only remember ever being a human in it. And I don't, I don't remember elves, but I, you may be, have been able to make an elf. Uh, no, I think you could. I think you could make a dwarf one as well. I'm sure you could make dwarf and elf pawns. So I'm sure those races were already in the first one, but they've just gone far more into the, the elven world and, and all that sort of stuff. So that, that jumped out at me. Uh, the sheer quality of the things like the dragons and stuff were just insanely, they looked insane inside the game. Um, Character-wise, the... Oh, the the character creation looked a lot more in depth, I think. So it looks like you can do a lot more with it. I, th I, th I feel like the first game, the character creation wasn't great and you couldn't really get a very good vibe of your character. I always feel like my character never looked quite the way I wanted it to. You're kind of stuck with a lot of presets, I think, if I remember rightly. Someone can correct me on that. But it certainly it's, it looked a lot, lot better from a character creation point of view from what I remember the first one being without any shadow of a doubt. It's still got the same concept at the beginning where Big Dragon comes along and takes your heart out and makes you an Arisen and off you go and you've got to go on this massive journey to fix all the wrongs of the world or whatever it is that you've got, that we've got to do. I can't remember what the story bloody was in the first one other than someone ripping your heart out and having to fight a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but So I don't think from a story perspective the first one really stood out really. Uh, so I'm hoping that maybe the story in this one's a lot richer and a lot, a lot better with it. Um... So I tell you what, well, that's nothing else is sort of springing out in my brain at the moment. So let's uh, let's jump into the IGN article and see see what they've remembered. People, this dog is going for it. You know I mean, <laughs> you want to try doing a uh, a vlog while a dog is barking its head off in the house next door, and just try keeping your concentration. This might help. It's just uh, every time I say that. He seems to go quiet until I have to think again. <laughs> so here we go, people. Here we go. Uh, well, actually, here's here's what I wrote down from uh, from what I wrote. Parallel world we talked about. Yeah, loads of they showed off quests, side quests, and all that sort of stuff. So that all that that all looked more in depth and more interesting than the first one. Uh, well, let me fix myself here a minute. A character speaking other tongues, Elvins, yep, spoke about that. Elf settlement, own language. I did use the word settlement in my other thing. A pawn specializations uh, include Elven translation. We talked about that. A, so, you, yeah, if you make a pawn, it, they've got the same pawn system. If you've never played the first one, basically you create a character that can run around with you, but it's, create, it's controlled by the AI of the game. But if it, it's something you create in the porn world which is kind of the spiritual type place and it means that other players online can pick your porn out to go and fight with them if they want if they think that that's got all the specs that they want for someone to run around with them so if you create a mage and they've got a mage in their team they could pick yours out the thing but it, it all depends on how they'll they're more likely to pick it up if they've got a if, if they're created well and you've been developing them well and they they see them getting better and better as you use them in your game and I think if they use them, they bring you rewards back and stuff like that. So that whole system is all still there, which is why there's no co-op in the game. A carrying someone, yeah, there was a an image of you picking somebody up and running with them. <laughs> so th there was a thing where you could pick up like animals and stuff in the like pigs and stuff and chuck them. You could pick things up and chuck them in the the original, but that's another level. I don't remember picking a whole person up and and taking them anywhere. A, that was just one of the trades. You just saw somebody in gameplay picking them up and, and running with this this woman in their arms out the door. Uh, it was part of a quest, though, I think. A full customization of pawns was in there again. Uh, there was new vocations. They showed off a vocation of a trickster uh, using a... It was using smoke to conjure things in this battle. And they said that it's a re it looked really cool on screen. And it, they said it's a great class if you want to stay away from the, the fighting. So if you want to sit back from the fighting and not get in the middle of it all you can stand back as a trickster and start conjuring all this stuff outside the battle to help it looked really really cool and it's uh, i like seeing that because with every rpg you, you tend to get the same classes over and over and over again and they seem to find it really hard to come up with classes that are outside of the basic ones that people find interesting and want to 
and want to play as or, or even come up with any new ideas at all and you just get the same ones over and over again so it's really cool and it, when you, i love seeing uh, them try new things like that in rpgs so looking forward to seeing what that's like whether or not i play as it i'm not sure i do like sitting back from fights but i generally go with the bow or i don't do mage very often it's nearly always a bow and a bow and sword or whatever a trickster you can pre-order it now, by the way. It's up there ready to pre-order. There's a deluxe edition as well, which has got... The, if you pre-order it, you get some bonuses anyway. If you pre-order the deluxe, you get more bonuses anyway. And it's on PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, and Steam. So it looks like it's coming out at the same time for all platforms, which is very cool indeed. So I feel like if they're announcing things now they're saying it's coming out in february you've got a fancy that they feel like it's really gold already they're just kind of polishing it and, and doing some fine tuning and stuff so really really excited for that i i do want to see a bit more of it though um i mean i think without any shadow of a doubt i think i'll be getting it day one simply because it's something you guys are going to want to see me play on the channel so even if it's not a whole playthrough it will certainly be some of a playthrough to show it off because it's that, that's what my channel is it's an rpg channel so i don't think there's any way that i'm not getting that game on day one uh so i am excited for it i'm looking forward to it uh i did i must have played the first one three or four times between because it got remastered so i played it on the ps3 played it on the ps4 i don't think i ever played it on the xbox platforms so i think i've played it on ps3 and ps4 and then i think i recorded it again on ps4 so I might have played it three times, one of which was on screen. And I did play it all the way to the end on screen as well. And that wasn't, I don't think that was that long ago. And now I'm saying it, I feel like maybe I did it on the PS5. But I don't know, I don't think I did. I think it was PS4. So anyway, yeah, they're, they're still on the channel if you want to go and watch it for the first one. Anyway, moving swiftly on, people. Moving swiftly on, let me know in the comments below what you think about Dragon's Dogma, people. Some of you in the uh, the Discord chat have been telling me that uh, you're super excited for it. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all of it. A uh, what have we got next, people? Xbox confirms plans to. Oh, hang on a minute. I promised you I was going to read the RGN article and I didn't do it, did I? So let's have a look at what RGN, uh, RGN, <laughs> IGN said about uh, Dragon's Dogma. Capcom just brought its latest Dragon's Dogma 2 showcase to a close, but it still made sure to show off towering new enemies like Talos, a new loc uh, a new vocation in form of the Trickster, and more immersive RPG gameplay. It was a short presentation that had its show stolen mo almost immediately when Capcom began to introduce fearsome foes like Talos, a giant statue capable of destroying its surrounding environment. It appears players can take Talos out by climbing around his body and striking weak points like the Shadow of Colossus style. Which is what I was talking about, people flying on with the birds and jumping onto it and all that. That was the big creature I was talking about. Talos is proof that Dragon's Dogma 2 is bringing a gigantic scale to the series, but that's not the only thing that's new. While the world may appear similar to the original adventure, producer Yoshiaki Hirabayashi, I think I did quite well there, says the sequel story takes place in a parallel world. As, a, as the Arisen, players will find themselves caught between the struggle of two kingdoms, Vermund and Batal. Meanwhile, Dragon's Dogma 2 director Hideki Itsuno introduced us to one of the many quests we'll encounter. This specific excursion follows the player's character as they work with and befriend elf, elven siblings. The section of the showcase was used to this section of the showcase was used to show off the elven settlement known as the Sacred Arbor. Here the arisen might encounter NPCs that speak their own language that requires translation to understand. If the player has a pawn nearby who understands Elvish, they will be able to automatically translate it. These specializations that pawns can acquire will make each of them more unique, Itsuno said, and hopefully more enjoyable to journey with. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 release date revealed. Other, news, uh, other new features highlighted in the Dragon's Dogma 2 showcase include the first look at more robust character creator, and the new tricks to vocation. The latter allows players to fight with foggy illusions while providing buffs for pawns. Itsuno said that this style of combat was made for those who prefer to do their fighting from the sidelines. Finally, Capcom confirmed that Dragon's Dogma 2 launches for PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S on March 22nd, 2024. Of course, we already knew that thanks to a leak earlier today. Well, I didn't. Uh, Pre-orders are open. 
Uh, well, actually, here we go. And there are a few options and goodies for buyers to choose from. In addition to the standard edition, players will have the option to pick up the deluxe version of the Event Dragon's Dogma 2. That bundle the base game with uh, that bundles the base game with 1500 Rift Crystals, the Dragon's Dog music, and sound collection. Then Explorer's Camping Kit and six other useful items. Those who pre-order the standard edition will be granted access to the superior weapon set, which includes some shiny tools for the four, star, uh, four starting vocations. Pre-orders for the deluxe edition, meanwhile, come with the standard bonuses as well as the Ring of Assurance. For more on Dragon's Dogma 2, blah, blah, blah. So there you go. I didn't miss too much, did I? I don't think I missed anything, in fact. It was just a little bit... Uh, more in depth in some of the things I had highlighted. So there you go. Yes, let me know in the comments below what you think of all of that people on Dragon's Dogma 2. Blimey, it's got hot in here. The minute I put all the lights on and everything, yeah, it's 22 and a half degrees. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I've got all the doors shut in this room as well because they're trying to block out the dog barking as much as I can. It's a good job it's not middle of the bloody summer, people, I'll tell you. Right, what have we got? Xbox confirms plans to appear at the Game Awards after last year's no-show. Again, all of these coming from IGN people. Props to IGN. Uh, Xbox confirms plans to appear at the Game Awards after last year's no-show. After a notable absence last year, Microsoft confirms that Xbox will have some news to share at this, this year's Game Awards. In an email sent out to some, including IGN, Microsoft confirmed that it won't be a no-show again at the 2023 ceremony, teasing that fans teasing fans that there will be major announcements and more xbox news you won't want to miss while microsoft did not explicitly say what type of xbox news would be at the event the company has many games in development and it recently acquired activision blizzard after a lengthy process xbox's biggest games from the game awards 2021 well i suppose that's just gonna just mentioning uh, hellblade 2 which hasn't come out yet uh, Avowed, Stalker 2, Everwild, State of Play, State of Decay 3, Hellblade 2, Sinuous Saga. Oh, I said that already. And Fable Reboot. Um, Game Awards is set to air on December 7th. Oh, it is next week. Not far away at all, people. That's going to be worth a good watch. Well, guess what the next vlog is going to be about then? <laughs> uh be a few changes. Oh, right. He said, yeah, there's going to be a few changes to the show's format as producer and host Jeff Keighley confirmed in recent Q&A that the show will phase out the world premiere label and plans to beef up security to avoid any stage crashes. I don't remember seeing any stage crashes. Um, regarding games that Xbox either owns or published... It has several titles up for nomination at the Game Awards, including Hi-Fi Rush, Starfield, Forza, uh, Forza, Forza Motorsport, Diablo 4, um, so on. Well, there you go, people. Yeah, it'll be good to see them there. It'll be good to see what they've got on the cards. Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting year coming up in a couple of years, in fact, because I feel like PlayStation have kind of hammered their big guns already. And I, I'm feeling like, w w what's coming next? <laughs> Like, I think there's a Final Fantasy VII, obviously, is a PlayStation exclusive, but it's not necessarily a PlayStation studio. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how Microsoft come out swinging, really, because their, their big hitters are all kind of coming to a crescendo, and we should see those soon. Uh, certainly over the next year, we should see a lot more of what's going on with all of their big hitters. And, of course, we've got Starfield already, which um, still hasn't teased me in at all. What have we got next, people? What have we got next? A... Uh, Nearly half of CD Projekt now working on The Witcher 4, people. Good grief. How very exciting. Um, <laughs> okay, well, we've got two. Uh, or at least I thought I did. Yeah, we have. Emphasize freedom. So we've got two articles here, one of which I picked up the day before the other one funnily enough and then i've sort of linked them together so we'll read each article out both from ign so uh half of them working on nearly half of cd project red is now working on the witcher 4 code name polaris following the release of cyberpunk 2077 expansion phantom liberty confirmation arrived during cd project red's latest earnings report which indicated almost 330 developers or just under 50 percent of its development staff blimey so they've got they've got 660 staff just about or more development staff uh, were working on the highly anticipated sequel as of 
October 31st, 2023. CD Projekt CEO Adam Kaczynski also confirmed the company expects more than 400 developers will be working on Polaris by mid-2024. The Polaris team had grown to 260 members as of July 31st, 2023, more than a third of all of the CD Projekt Red, but development on the game is ramping up following the release of Phantom Liberty. So looks like they're taking the gas off of Cyberpunk now and that's going to be like a whole kind of game of the year edition and that's done and just supported rather than more content maybe yeah as they transition away from phantom liberty and cd project red said has said previously that many of those team members would join polaris alongside cyberpoint 277 sequel code named orion and other projects as for its development stage cd project red hasn't said anything since it confirmed polaris had entered pre-production back in may 2022 the development boost doesn't mean another Witcher game is right round the corner, of course. CD Projekt Red CEO Adam Kaczynski said in October 2022 that Polaris is still three years away, at least, because alongside creating a whole new game, the studio is having to develop new technology with Unreal Engine 5 as well. Uh, Polaris was only announced in March 2022, however, so three years... Uh, sorry, March 2022, however, so three years could be on the earlier side of this assessment Chief Commercial Officer Michael Nawakowski also said at the time that creating a new game alongside new technology like CD Projekt Red is doing with Polaris usually takes four or five years, though this won't necessarily be the case this time. I think we can all agree, though, that we don't want the mess that was CD Projekt, uh, CD Projekt, Cyberpunk <laughs> 2077. So just take your fucking time, guys. You know what I mean, and girls. When I say guys, I mean I mean both people. <laughs> I don't want to say and girls every time I say guys come on guys I can't even want me to I mean <laughs> we're all equal on this channel and in life people right and alongside that article uh, The Witcher 4 will emphasise freedom and intense gameplay so this interests me because it almost felt like maybe we're not playing as a pre-written character this time, like Geralt. Because we know Geralt's story is over as a main story anyway. Maybe we'll get a little bit of Geralt here and there. Maybe we'll maybe get some uh, interaction with him. We don't know, but we might. But this kind of makes me think their thought process here suggests about character creation and all that sort of stuff. So uh, the next mainline Witcher game, codenamed Polaris, will emphasise freedom while upping the intensity of gameplay, CD Projekt Red has said. Speaking to Liga Nerd, game director Sebastian Kalemba said CD Projekt Red is looking to build upon the elements Witcher fans know and love while pushing the boundaries of what a role-playing game can be. We have some elements of the law that need to be kept as the universe is always the same and we cannot go beyond certain limits. We must therefore follow a very specific direction while innovating, Columbus said. Our priority is to try to do something that always goes beyond the limits. We want to go further. We want to try to do something new compared to what already to what we already see in RPGs, he added. The idea is indeed to build something that goes beyond the previous The Witcher and that manages to tell something more intense with also more intense gameplay. CD Projekt Red is also incorporating lessons learned from Cyberpunk 2077. As Kalemba said, the combination of story, strong storytelling and player freedom is something it wants to bring forward into Polaris. Alongside hardwired story moments, the player must also be able to have freedom, feel like they are free, he said. Starting from the construction of your character, our pressure point is immersion. It is about the possibility of choosing your own path. Also, the build, obviously, because being an RPG, the player must be able to build their own character as he, as he sees fit, something we were never able to do in a previous Witcher game that I'm aware of. We were always Geralt. The Witcher will follow this structure, lots of freedom, but there is a specific path to follow from a narrative point of view. That said, we could be going down the road of a Mass Effect where you're still like a shepherd, but you can customise what shepherd looks like. So, you know, it could be something like that. But certainly not a character that is in a graphic novel like Geralt or whatever, where you've already got what the guy looks like. So, it will be a while before... 
uh, before get to taste this. I think there's a wee missing there. Freedom and narrative for themselves as Polaris is still two years away. Oh, yeah, we know all that already. So yeah, so I just found that second article really interesting because it does sound like they're going down the road of making a Witcher a very free RPG where you can create your own character. It has a story to play, but you can do many things within like Skyrim and everything else. You know, you, you are a certain character in that game, but you can be whoever that Dragonborn can be whoever you want Dragonborn to be. So I think maybe they're going down that route and you can just have whatever character you want and they'll have this story to go on. And I think that would be fantastic. I think uh, it kind of takes them away from having to pick out another protagonist, per se. Um, it, we already kind of know what Siri looks like, so I can't imagine they're going to let us just design Siri the way we want to design Siri. So I feel like maybe they're just going with a whole story quest in the Witcher world with a character that is your character that you've created, maybe. Sounds like, doesn't it? I mean, they just want more freedom in the game, which we've never had in the Witcher. So I'm yeah, very excited for it. I mean, I think I've only I've played The Witcher a number of times. I have finished it. I went all in fact, I finished it on the channel. I played a whole playthrough on the channel. It was a long time ago. My commentary's not quite as smooth as it is now. It was quite early on when I was doing the commentary stuff, so I was still getting used to it. So it's a little bit cringy when I listen to it back, but I have finished that game on the channel once, and I'm pretty sure I'd finished it off the channel once. So I've, I've finished it a couple of times, and it is still by far the best RPG as far as side quest goes. I've never known writing as good as the side quests in that game. And everything you did was just so interesting. Everywhere you went was just so interesting. Even going out looking for the armors and the weapons sets and everything to be able to construct them and the, the reason to fight enemies in the open world wasn't to gather XP. You got a little bit of XP, but there was no point grinding because it just didn't do anything. But the reason to fight them was to get the bits off of them that you were going to use to make all of this stuff. So that I just found it... I'm, I'm surprised more RPGs don't do that. And you got all of your XP from the actual quest, doing the actual quests, as far as I remember. So, yeah, I mean, it, I just... A brilliant game to play really really good and what that does is it means that you're never sat grinding for no reason just to level up to get strong enough to go and do the basically the best way to level up in that game is to go and do the quests and that just drives you forward into in that game it's superb it's a really really good game so i hope they keep all the good stuff and just uh make it even better people yeah super excited about that a xbox yeah i wasn't going to spend too long on this but xbox still hopes to get game pass on first party titles on playstation and nintendo was the original article that was poo-pooed by phil spencer about a day later <laughs> uh so basically one of the finance guys at, at, at xbox basically said we're still wanting to push forward and we still want to get our uh our game pass onto every possible game system that you can every possible screen that we can and that includes people that we used to call our competitors and then about a day later phil spencer was like no 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 we're not that's not in our foresight at all we're not we're not trying to get it it's not in our plans to get that on playstation and uh nintendo he said so i'm not going to go deep into those uh because we're already sort of 46 minutes 47 minutes in here people i think 46 um but that's basically the crux of it. So it's like, you wonder what these CEOs do, though, because it's like, well, not the CEOs themselves, but Phil Spencer must be sitting there going, for the love of Christ, can people stop bloody talking <laughs> to the press and stuff and saying shit that's not true? You know what I mean? Like, just if you want to say anything about Xbox, come and speak to me first. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's a pretty bold statement to come out with when you, you're not even in charge, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, people. Put me in charge of everything. We'll be fine. We're all doomed. <laughs> we'll be doomed if you do that. Right. What was up next? Alan Wake 2 is seemingly getting a new game plus this month. This very month, people. For those people that have uh, completed the game. Uh, Alan Wake 2 developer, again, IGN. I, uh, Alan Wake 2 developer Remedy Entertainment has seemingly revealed that a new Game Pass uh, Game Plus mode New Game Plus mode will be added to the game in December 2023. A cryptic but admittedly on-brand Twitter, well, X post from Remedy didn't explicitly say New Game Plus, but uh, would uh, didn't explicitly say New Game Plus would be arriving in December, but it heavily implied as such. Alongside an image that showed Alan Wake pointing to a flashlight at a wall that said New Game Plus, Remedy posted, New Month, New Game, dot, 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 plus, question mark. 
No details on what the new Game Plus mode will entail were shared, whether certain abilities will carry forward, if new content will unlock, and so on. Nor did Remedy say exactly when the update would arrive. So that's exciting for anyone that's finished the game, looking for more. Uh, I was, uh, I mean, I was loving it, actually. Uh, but because of the way that things worked out, I can't, I'm, I'm almost positive the reason I stopped playing Resi 4 was because Jedi Survivor turned up. And for some reason, I was waiting for, I was, I was waiting for a delivery, yeah, because I, sh- I did the unboxing for you guys. I was waiting for the delivery of that stuff and uh, I thought I need something to play. So, and it wasn't that stuff. It was something I can't remember, but I was waiting for a delivery to arrive anyway. And I thought, and it was because it, Amazon normally leave it somewhere, but it was Royal Mail and Royal Mail don't leave it. They take it back to the post office. So I thought, I don't want to all that faff. I'll just sit in for it. I thought, I need something to play while I'm waiting. And I thought, eh, I'll go back to Resi, just see if, see how I feel when I get in there. Totally hooked immediately, like from where I left off, just fucking loving it. Uh, so I'm so kind of stuck on that now the alan wake which i'd started sort of two days before sort of fell by the wayside <laughs> so i'm gonna have to come back to alan wake uh but i was loving it it was really really good and i will get back to it and i will play it so it was almost silly of me to buy it when i did if i'd picked up resi 4 beforehand i would probably have not bothered with alan wake at the time because i wouldn't have been playing both of them at once it's also a game that like if you're going to sit and chat to somebody else while you're playing it it's hard to do that with Alan Wake because there's a lot of story stuff going on while he's walking around. With Resi, there tends to be less of that and more of the story stuff happens in the cutscenes and you're just kind of doing your action stuff and what have you. So, yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one. You don't want to miss anything in Alan Wake, sort of con story-wise, while he's chatting and stuff as you walk through. Because he's talking through all the writings and the, 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 the scripts, the manuscripts that he's writing and stuff at the time while you're doing the gameplay. It's quite It's really, really cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, but fantastic game. Um, so I'm really happy and chuffed for those people that have finished it and looking for an excuse to play it again. Uh, what do we have next, people? What was up next? Capcom confirms more Resident Evil remakes are inbound, people. IGN once again. After the success of Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4 remakes, Capcom has confirmed plans to continue the trend, although stopped short of announcing which Resident Evil game is next in line for the remake treatment. At a PlayStation Partner Award event in Japan, attended and translated by IGN Japan, Resident Evil 4 remake director Yasahiro Ampo said that the company will announce its next Resident Evil remake in due course. Can I just give a good props to myself for getting the uh, Japanese names, like, I think, spot on this evening. (laughs) I've no idea whether it's right or not. It sounds to me like I'm saying them really well. Yes, Anpo replied when asked if Capcom wants to keep making Resident Evil remakes. We've released three remakes so far and they have all been received very well. Since it allows a modern audience to play these games, it is something I am happy to do as someone that loves these older games and we want to continue doing more. What game we will remake in the future is something that we would like to announce in the future, so please look forward to it. With Resident Evil 2, 3 and 4 remakes already out, thoughts turn to Game Capcom... Uh, to game Capcom will tackle to which sorry to which game Capcom will tackle next fans have long called for a remake of Sega Dreamcast classic Resident Evil Code Veronica X which I felt like they should have done before 4 but anyway which first launched in 2000 mind you 4 got 10 out of 10s all over the place what do I know uh, while the game was remastered for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, at PlayStation 3 and is a- available to play via backwards compatibility, a current-gen remake would bring a new wave of players to the title for PlayStation 5, Series X, S and PC. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can play them on the current... I mean, it's so dated. I mean, it's, it's a hard play now. Uh, alternative choices include the original Resident Evil, Evil Resident Evil 0, or moving on to the more action oriented Resident Evil 5. A uh, when develop quote when developing a new game there is no way to know what will be received well by the players, which makes it difficult. Ampo continued. In the case of a remake, there are always players that have played the original, which I think can be seen as an advantage. We are very grateful to users that are vocal about their opinion. It allows us to develop with the player's opinion in mind. For example, if this is how the players feel, then maybe we can make it like this. I think this is one of the reasons why our remakes are so well received. During the same Q&A, Yoshiaki Hirabayashi, 
producer of the Resident Evil 4 remake, said remaking Resident Evil games with Capcom's own RE engine has its benefits, indicating Capcom plans to stick with the, en- the engine for future projects. We use the RE engine for many of our titles, Hirobayashi said. It's, it is true that sharing information between teams has greatly benefited the speed of development. Resident Evil 4 remake launched in March and was a smash hit. I'm not sure. Oh, that's their quote for the game. Yeah, so that's it. So yeah, I'm actually really excited about that. The two that I would be most interested in getting remakes for would be Code Veronica X, which I've already mentioned, and Revelations. The first Revelations, which I only played for the first time really recently. Almost positively it was on PlayStation 5 about a year ago, because I remember talking about it on the channel and stuff. And it was you can tell it was made for handheld, the way that it's made, but it is action-based, but with the horror slice in there. And it's almost like the whole mansion thing going on, but on a cruise ship. It is superb, people. It is superb. <laughs> uh, but not, is it a cruise ship or is it just a steel? It's, well, it's just a massive, like a massive oil tanker, I think. And inside it's just got like this massive mansion type stuff going on. It's superb, people. It's really, really good. Um, and I just loved it. And I, I was sitting playing it and I thought, this would be fucking awesome as a remake if they do this with proper full-on graphics and everything. That RE engine. What the shit? Uh, so, yeah, they've got so many openings. And it got really good reviews, the first Revelations. The second one didn't, but the first one got really good reviews. Uh, so I don't know. I, my my bones are telling me that they might do Red Veronica X first simply because so many people have been asking them why didn't they do that before for... Uh, but the other part of my bones is saying maybe they will do Revelations first because it's already action orientated. Code Veronica X was not action orientated, mind you, nor was two and three, I suppose, uh, originals. So, uh, yeah, they could go anyway, couldn't they? So it's got, I, for me, I'd put money on one of those two Revelations or Code Veronica X. We'll see what happens though. Finally, people, what was our final story of the day? Of the week, I should say. Silent Hill 2 remake developers appear... A developer appeals for patience as fans get jittery. Have you been getting jittery? Because I've been getting jittery. No, I haven't, now that I remember. I've not been jittery at all. Who are these jittery people and why are they even... Shh, now, stop being jittery and go away. <laughs> How are we jittery? They only got announced about a year ago, for goodness sake. Let's see what the article says. Jittery. Who are these people they're speaking to? Jittery people. The developer of the hotly anticipated Silent Hill 2 remake has taken the unusual step of appealing for patience as calls for the gameplay from eager fans intensifies. After months of rumours and speculation, Konami announced the Silent Hill 2 remake as part of its Silent Hill transmission event on October 2022. During the event, Konami showcased a three-minute trailer that uh, provided a look at the famously foggy town in 4K, in addition to providing glimpses of the Pyramid of Pyramid Head and other notable elements from the original game. The trailer confirmed that Bloober Team, the Polish studio best known for horror games Layers of Fear and the Medium, had been signed to handle development. But we've not seen anything more of the game in the year since, leaving fans to uh, to feed on scraps of information gleaned from interviews. And following the launch of of the heavily criticised interactive streaming series Silent Hill Ascension and confusion over what sounded like the inclusion of a special origin story for Pyramid Head, it's fair to say fans are eager to see more of the Silent Hill 2 remake. It looks like the Bloober team is bearing the brunt of the community calls for more footage, which is the game's developers... uh, which is which as the game developers is perhaps unfair in a tweet published last week blooper uh, bloober directed fans to konami the company said the company it said was responsible for silent hills marketing uh, quote when could we expect to get some news on the remake or is that just uh, is that up to konami uh it's kind of hard to be stuck in the fog for over a year without oh, that's somebody posting it up um Here's Blueber Blunt's response. Konami is the publisher of the game and communication is definitely part of their job. It appears Blueber has had enough of this sort of thing from fans, so much so that it felt the need to release a statement on its social media channels over the weekend that moves to pressure fans that was, that all is well with the game, but also to point out that announcements will come from Konami, not the developer. 
The statement says, as Bloober team, we are proud to be a part of Konami's plan for the Silent Hill franchise. Alongside our partner, we are diligently working to ensure the Silent Hill 2 remake attains the highest quality. On behalf of our development team, we would like to clarify that the production is progressing smoothly and in accordance with our schedule. We understand that many players around the world are eagerly anticipating news about the game and we appreciate your dedication. However, we kindly ask for a bit more patience once Konami, as the game's publisher, shares more information. We are confident that the wait will be worthwhile. Thank you for your understanding and support. Uh, reaction to the statement is mixed. While there is plenty of support for Bluebird alongside some comments calling the statement what it really is, concern remains about the status of Silent Hill 2 Remake. This is basically a ask Konami, you cowards. <laughs> so there you are. I don't know, like... I, I, I feel like it should be enough to just know that something's happening uh, and not have to, like, noise people up on Twitter and stuff and give developers a hard time i mean the last thing we want to do is rush people rush developers into releasing games i mean i don't well they do rush them but it's not because we're moaning it's because they feel like they need to make money sooner rather than later but you know if it's only been a year since they said bluber team's going to start developing it a year's nothing in game development so to be expecting get i mean even if you did get something it probably wouldn't be there by the time the game's finished it's probably going to be changed and be, be so different and yeah, I mean, and starting from the ground up as well, which they probably are. I mean, I know they've got they'll have story, they've got the story of two and everything, but they're not going to use any of the engine, and uh, they might use some of the art. But you're really starting from scratch on a on a situation on a, on a development situation like that. So three years pff, is a stretch anyway, I would say, on a development like that for a studio that size. Uh, so you could be waiting three or four, four years maybe for a game like that. I'd say, but who knows. It depends if they were in, if they were doing anything before the announcement, but it sounded like it was all just kind of arranged at that point and ready to rumble. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not... The more I think about Silent Hill, the more I think that it wasn't really a franchise I enjoyed. I, I seem to remember... I think... I don't know. I, I think the memory of it is better than what I'd actually want for it in the future. Like, I, it's too... It's one of those that's kind of too dark for me. <laughs> It's like, Resi I can get away with. I don't remember having, like, the same sort of weapons and all that sort of stuff in Silent Hill that you do in Resi. It was far more of a psychological terror. And you were meant to feel like you had little to use and what have you. And I'm not, it depends what they do with that, I suppose. You can tell me if I'm... You can let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. Maybe it is more Resi than I remember it. But even at that, the whole world was just a real freak show. Uh, I, I, there's certain vibes of horror that just kind of make me go... That's too much, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm not sure a Silent Hill 2 remake is something I'm going to buy. So I, I, I guess we'll find out, people, when it comes out. But uh, if it's any good at that. Um, I think, I feel like Konami are kind of bottling it a little bit. They can't be bothered to actually have a studio that can develop games anymore. But instead of actually leaving the gaming industry and just getting on with whatever it is they want to get on with, they seem to just dish this stuff out to other studios to do. And it's kind of like, mm, is it ever going to match what they did? You know, because those, those were the visions of the directors and the game developers at the time. Uh, I suppose you're not reinventing it as such. So I suppose you can just follow that. But I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what comes of it. At least Capcom are actually doing it in-house and they're working with people in-house and people that have been at that sh sh at Capcom for a very long time and ha are soaked in that ethos and those games. Um, kind of worries me with things like this where you're just dishing it out to... And, and you, if you were dishing it out to, like, Naughty Dog or something, then you wouldn't probably have the same concerns. But you're dishing it out to someone that's had... A kind of, um, but that being horrible, a sort of mediocre game like Medium, which got like sixes and sevens, and it wasn't an in-depth game at all. It was very much a look around and, you know, there wasn't much meat and bones to it, as far as I know. Uh, I think I never played it in the end, because uh, all of the reviews kind of said the same thing. It was kind of like, yeah, it was all right for a bit, but didn't shake your world or anything. So a studio of that size taking on a monumental game, franchise like silent hill uh for me is a little bit kind of concerning i'm not sure but anyway the hope i hope they prove me wrong i really do 
But uh, again, though, I'm not overly sure. If they do a fantastic job with it, I'm not even sure it's something I'd want to play because it just freaked me out too much. People, I'm a big baby is what's happening. You know, I had to, <laughs> I had to start playing. I started playing Alan Wake and when I finally got a bit of freedom to wander around the woods at the beginning near the lake, I just, I had to turn, after a little bit, I got to, I thought, I can't turn this off, man, it's freaking me out. So when I came back to it the next time, which was about a day later, I came back to it without my headphones on, <laughs> just played it with the TV sound, and it was much, much easier experience. So maybe that's something I should think about. Playing with your headphones on, Alan Wake, oh my God, man, it was scaring the shite out of me. Good grief, people. <laughs> There's a level of horror people, you know what I mean? Resident Evil, um did I play that with my headphones on? No, I don't think I did. I think I, I did when I first was playing it, I did, but when I came back to it when I was waiting for the delivery, I think I was just playing it without the headphones, so maybe that's the thing as well. But I don't I don't Resident Evil doesn't freak me out quite as much as some of the others though. Like Alan Wake freaks me out more than Resi. Resi's more <laughs> I feel like it's more gore and action certainly four is than the other ones uh like alan wake just the vibe of alan wake is just far far spookier uh so and resident evil even more so so yeah there's a there's a it was like when i, I play still on the channel i think me playing pc it was before i had proper recording kit and it was me with a this camp well it was a different camcorder actually but a camcorder similar pointed at me uh and me talking into the camera while i played pt because uh, I didn't have anything cool to link up, but then smelted it all together afterwards. And oh my god, I was scared shitless. People, I really was. My 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 reaction at the end when that fucking thing jumps out at me is still a a gem. <laughs> it's worth worth watching just to see my reaction at the end of it. Absolutely shit my pants, people. It was bloody ridiculous. That PT was just. That. I would never play a game like that. All I mean, it was only because it was a, a demo sort of thing that I played it at all. But I. <laughs> <laughs> and for the channel but oh my god i was shitting myself for the whole experience there's a level of horror people that i can take and there's a line people there's a line anyway let me know in the comments below about all of the things i've been talking about today people all of them anything you like even t talk to me about something that wasn't on today and was on last week or maybe something i've missed this week people was the news this week that i've missed i might have done Thoroughly enjoyed that once again, people, and we've just hit the hour mark. We've just gone over it, people. So there you are. That is it. I shall talk no more, because if I do, I'll just be bleating on about nothing at all, people, and nobody wants that. So there you are. It has been an honour and a privilege. Yes, it has. Coming to you in this vlog of mine today, and I shall see you all in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.